as you guys can see here you see the people with the uh the AK-47s, it says Ilhan Omar's Minneapolis community has the largest number of male foreign terror recruits in the U.S. It says extremism in the Somali community of Minneapolis has long been a concern of the American counterterrorism officials. As both Islamic State and Al-Qaeda ally Al-Shabaab have uh, alarmingly been successful at recruiting from this area what 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 do you think about this here when in in terms of the recruiting out of minnesota and why don't you think people here in minnesota can't see the danger when people start out caring greatly about their neighbors and they want to have and whether it's a religious thing you know they consider themselves spiritual or good Christians or, or Jews or whatever, that's fine until the people you're supporting start taking away from you when you can't walk down the street safely. I've seen videos um, of parts of Minneapolis, for example, that Germain, I mean, architecturally, it sort of looks like America, but when you look at what the streets are like, and who's out on the streets, you might as well be in an Arab town run by Islamists. I'm, I'm shocked. Um, the Somalia community in Ilhan Omar's district is the most radicalized congressional district in the United States of America. And it's not just that people come over here with those beliefs, it's that they're being preached to on a regular basis in the mosques in your community, right? And it's in the Quran that part of the way you can uh, fight for your religion is to wage a jihad by population. You don't necessarily invade with a big army and start killing people. You can just migrate. And you bring enough people that get involved in the process. And as you said, Jermaine, you end up being at least a voting block that can put anybody into office you want to. That's how she got elected in a district that the last person that was there was Keith Ellison, who was, who was until he became your attorney general, in between oh, apparently oh. beating up his girlfriend periodically. <laughs> um, you can't make it up, Barry. Radical, he was the most radical anti-Israel member of Congress, Jermaine. And, and so what happens? He steps down, they pick another more radical to take his place. And that's how she got elected. I just hope, I truly do, that enough people in your community are offended enough to say, hey, she doesn't represent what we believe. But part of the problem is who gets to vote, Jermaine? I, I don't understand in America it's harder to get a driver's license or buy cigarettes or buy beer or get a checking account or get a welfare check than it is to vote. Yeah. And in other words, you can walk in and say you're Bozo the Clown with virtually no ID. And if Bozo the Clown is on the voting roll, you're voting. And... It, doesn't mean you're a citizen, doesn't mean you're here legally, doesn't mean that you're about to vote for the abolition of the United States, all of which scare the hell out of me, and it should scare your viewers. But quite frankly, you get enough people, as you said, Jermaine, flooding into a community, and they get organized enough to vote, and they get registered, they're going to vote for Elon Omar, no matter what she says, because she represents the way they think. And the way they think is the American way is not um, compatible with their religion. And a woman outside uncovered, even if it's 95 degrees, is not compatible. And a woman with her sexual organs not mutilated is not compatible with their religion. So either the people that love their country and love the way things used to be in Minnesota get organized and go to the polls, or they're going to be overwhelmed and policy is going to change it's it's the way things work in a democratic republic get involved 
organize, get your candidate to run, or suffer the consequences. And so far, for a number of elections in a row, Jermaine, in your district. <laughs> I know. I know. It's, it's bad and getting worse.